Hi, Atawak is speaking here. Thank you very much uh, for watching this video. I have the pleasure of presenting our latest work together with Ting, uh, titled Over Optimism is a Bottleneck for Effective Price Communication. In this video, you're going to uh, learn about over optimism and how it can arise when firms use starting prices as their focal price queue to communicate a range of prices. Let's have a brief uh, uh, overview on over optimism. But it has been shown that in an alternative set, people tend to overestimate the best alternative's value and underestimate the worst uh, one's value. And also it has been shown that this over and underestimation uh, happens both before and after people make a choice. And in that uh, situation, in case people choose the best alternative from a set of alternatives, because they have already overestimated the value of the best alternative, they will usually feel a sense of disappointment after the true value is revealed to them. And this is also cited as the optimizer's curse. Uh, concerning the moderation effects, it has been shown that the, uh, when there is more un uncertainty about the true values of these alternatives, uh, and also when these true values of alternatives are closer together, and when there are essentially much more alternatives to choose from, this effect is gonna be worsened and much more strong. Uh, well, uh, now concerning starting prices, starting prices, uh, these prices usually represent a range of prices and uh, are generally used to communicate a minimum for the price of the worst available alternative. Uh, there is a substantial body of literature uh, around these uh, price queues. The, maybe the most important one is the baiting and switching strategy where uh, sellers uh, advertise low starting prices, low prices, price queues, but they do not honor that in the end with the hope of generating some demand, uh, which is usually cited uh, with the, uh, uh, under the title of reducing barriers to enter a market, especially in auctions, and signaling an attractive deal. Uh, on the other hand, behavior research uh, has tried to identify an anchoring effect caused by starting prices uh, on the spending willingness to pay an external reference prices. Uh, last but not least, uh, it has been shown that uh, a lower amount as a starting price can sig signal a, a low quality state in the, in the product, and that uh, can in turn hurt uh, the revenue performance. But our research question is the following. So can starting prices uh, trigger over optimism? And as such, we assume that the customer knows uh, that the lower bond of the prices uh, is equal to the starting price. She proceeds with this information and then finds out that there are n number of available products. And uh, she also perceives the distribution of the prices in, in, the, in, in the range with the uh, CDF of F. And here I want to try to estimate what she per perceives as the lowest possible valuation for this product, so the lowest price. Uh, so what I do here is try to calculate the expected uh, value of this uh, estimator. Feel free to stop the video. Uh, I'm generally estimating uh, this expected value by first calculating the cumulative uh, distribution function and then integrating over all of the values. And if I do so using Bayesian Bi statistics, if I do so uh, using uh, integral by parts, I will reach to the following uh, expected uh, value, that the expected value of the lowest prices uh, actually depends on the starting price, which is no new information. The customer always pays, uh, expects to pay this more than starting price. So the starting price is already optimistic, but it also has a positive term, uh, term which depends on the price distribution. And uh, we call this term uh, actually over, uh, uh, over uh, optimism. Uh, Please note that uh, the customer will always feel a discrepancy between the advertised starting price and what he or she perceives as the product with the, with the lowest valuation. The more this discrepancy is, the more the disappointment. And as such, uh, when the disappointment is uh, higher, we expect that the, the customer is going to be less likely to uh, purchase the product. And uh, concerning this term, uh, the integral, this term is... Uh, much bigger when the skewness of the prices in the range uh, is, is negative. So the tail of the distribution is on the left-hand side. In that case, the, the most overestimation happens 
uh, over optimism is in play and the disappointment uh, is going to play a role. So let's take a look at our hypothesis. Firstly, uh, we define an over optimistic starting price as a starting price that is used for a left skewed price range. Uh, and then uh, we make the following argument. A customer will be less likely to convert if they observe a starting price that is used to represent a left skewed price range. Uh, of course, in comparison with the right skewed uh, one. So these translate to the following hypothesis. If a customer observes an over-optimistic over starting price, they are less likely to uh, purchase or convert. Uh, and this negative effect uh, is exacerbated, is going to be much more stronger when there are more products available. And this is coming from the literature. So in a nutshell, if we have different uh, distribution of the prices in a range, uh, the bottom left figure shows when uh, starting prices can trigger over optimism. Uh, and then in this research, uh, we partner up with a storage rental company. Uh, this company rents out different sizes of storage spaces uh, in different locations in the country. And uh, uh, concerning the pricing of these, the most important factor is the size of the uh, storage space. So for instance, here, if you look at the 18 cubic meters, this, the prices are starting from 90 to around 140. Uh, but what they do is advertise the starting prices on the website and also on the phone call. Uh, and if the customer agrees to proceed, the customer shows up at the location and then they observe the actual information of all of the prices and the uh, number of alternative products. And also they will perceive the distribution of the prices. Uh, with that in mind, I want to show now the identification steps. So we look at all of the customers uh, in a time frame of one year who showed up at the locations and we study their conversion behavior, their purchase decision. Uh, we also look at the occupancy of the class that they have requested uh, to purchase from, uh, meaning that if the occupancy is higher, then um, there are essentially less number of products to purchase. Uh, and also we record uh, the percentage of over optimistic starting prices within the requested class of the customer. So the more this percentage, it means that the more um, left skewed the price ranges are. And also we control for some other variables, which I will discuss in the following slides. So first, let's take a look at the uh, purchase likelihood or conversion. Uh, the first model describes the effect in the absence of control variables, uh, but the second model uh, kind of controls for uh, some essential uh, variables, such as the requested class, uh, renting urgency, how urgent they want uh, to rent, the reason that they want to rent, whether this is because they are moving a house or a hobby related reason, and lastly, the type of their request, whether they want to have a reservation or just a tour or a price quotation. And we see that the conversion is negatively uh, correlated with the over-optimistic starting prices. So the more uh, over-optimistic the starting prices are, uh, the lower the likelihood of purchase. But this negative effect is uh, being compensated with the high occupancy. So when occupancy is high equivalently, when there are low number of products to purchase, this negative effect is not going to be there anymore. Uh, uh, further identification is that, so we are talking about the discrepancy of the prices. Well, we should expect to see this effect where prices really matter. When the sizes are bigger, the price ranges uh, have uh, more kind of width. So when the, uh, uh, the, the sizes are smaller, the price really doesn't range a lot. And we expect to see this over optimism uh, uh, for actually the bigger sizes. If we run the same model for different sizes, we see that the negative effect of over optimistic starting pri price is only significant when uh, the sizes are bigger than medium and when the price actually ranges a lot. Uh, as for uh, further theory, uh, so remember that when a starting price is over optimistic, it means that the skewness is negative and the prices are located around higher prices. And as such, uh, we expect that if a customer rents in that case, they will rent from the uh, uh, products with higher evaluation, which is, uh, let's say, closer to the other available products in the range. So we expect them to actually spend higher. But since they are doing it with a sense of disappointment, uh, we expect that this, this will have a further uh, say a spillover effect on their negotiations 
to get more discount. Uh, and uh, usually, so when they try to rent, they ask for discounts and this is a human uh, uh, kind of negotiation. And let's see what happens on the contract price and discount. Uh, well, expectation is uh, that um, they're gonna spend uh, higher amounts, as you can see here, but this effect is also compensated by the occupancy. As for the discounts, when the prices are over op optimistic, they tend to ask for more discounts. And again, the same interaction effect is significant, but this effect is only, uh, let's say, positive on the discount when the occupancy is low. When it's high, there is no such effect. As for the conclusion, uh, so this study contributes to uh, the body of the uh, previous studies on the starting prices as the price cues. Reference price theory is involved anchoring effect and also quality or ac attractive deal uh, uh, signal in literature. And also, uh, with this study, we contribute to over-optimism research by showing a subsequent to over-optimism scenario. What happens if people already know the value or the price of the worst or the best alternative? And uh, uh, the effect and the subsequent effect on their choice, on their conversion, on their paid price, and uh, of course, on uh, the discounts, depending on the distribution of other prices in the range. So what we hope to do in the future for, with this research is actually conducting post show up surveys to really ask from the customers, what is the reason that you are not purchasing to make sure whether this is a, a, the correct mechanism. And also we really want to segregate uh, the effect um, in an online or lab experimental setting uh, to make sure that the mechanism that we identify is the mechanism at play. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you have further inquiries or any other remarks or questions, uh, I will be available uh, to have a chat with you. Uh, these are the contact details.